This Manchester derby will decide who goes top of the Premier League today and also could have big implications on the title race. Challenge accepted. We've literally got the same record as Man City in the Premier League right now. Eight wins, two draws and zero losses. Both of us are unbeaten with 26 points. Basically, whoever wins this game goes top of the Premier League. Dude, don't mess this up. We need to take the fight to Manchester City. This is the kind of game where we need to step up and show the world that Manchester United are back. If you're excited for this episode, drop a like, subscribe. Big game's coming ahead. Now, we do have a press conference to kick things off. First one, Elanga isn't getting much game time and could do with a loan move for six months. Same goes for Fowler. To be honest, guys, as far as I remember, I think we're giving them decent amount of game time, you know. Where's Elanga? He's gonna buy a couple of ratings this season. He's played, yeah, maybe, maybe Elanga not. He's only played three games, but surely Fowler, seven games at Manchester United. I think he's getting good experience. I'm not quite sure whether I want to loan him out. I'm genuinely considering selling Van Der Beek, guys. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to, you know, unlock his potential and everything. But I, I just feel like I'd rather try and build up the next David Beckham than, of course, try and use Van Der Beek. Maybe in a different series, we can make Van Der Beek work. But for now, for this Manchester United series, I'd rather trust Fowler because he's a Youth Academy product. And yes, that means I am transfer listing Van Der Beek. Oh boy, this is going to cause havoc in the comment section. But try and understand, I love building up players from the academy and I want to do that with Fowler. Next up, David De Gea's contract is expiring in nine months. You should renew his contract because he's performed well in this series. Absolutely, but I didn't know his contract was expiring. All right, let's take a look. David De Gea, contract expiring in eight months. You guys are right, man. We need to renew that contract as soon as possible. I don't want him leaving for free. He's one of the best keepers in the game. He's kept us alive in so many different fixtures. Let's give him that new contract. Crucial squad role, obviously. And let's see what else we need to offer him. A three-year extension. I wouldn't mind that because he's a keeper and he's willing to accept that as well perfect no release clause and we'll certainly give him like a wage bump if yeah i think we should i think we should he's the main man here we'll give him 150,000 per week no signing bonus or anything but that's our offer to De Gea and i think he's gonna accept there you go we've renewed david De Gea's contract next up after the signing of Ferland mendy the defensive editors have become a lot less and Varane and torres have been doing a lot better you sir are not wrong Ferland mendy has been rock solid an average rating of 7.1 for a defender shows that he's been doing a great job. Compare that to some of our defenders, it's it's a lot more than that. So that just shows that he has been putting in a great shift and he's been a fantastic addition to the team. And that's got me completely thinking, do we even need a centre-back in the summer window, in the January window actually? I like the back line as is now. It's much better or feels much better than last season. Maybe this money and maybe that one signing we make in January could go elsewhere. Any ideas? Let me know. Robert Lewandowski continues to show what he's all about. Picks up yet another player of the episode. All right, boys, here we go in an absolute mammoth game in the Premier League. I just want to straight away get into it. A Manchester derby to decide who goes top of the Premier League. When was the last we had a game like this? You know, Manchester derby with such implications. It's time for us to step up. I want to keep my unbeaten record intact. All right, boys, y'all ready for this? That's going to be the lineup we go for. The thing, Grealish center forward and Zapata on the left. I'm confused, but the rest of the team looks insane with De Bruyne, Diaz and all. Oh boy. You know what guys? I'm not convinced with Nkunku at all. I just I just don't get that vibe from him anymore at Cam. I, I, I've in fact feel like Bruno Fernandes over there is just much more effective. So call me crazy but for this game I'm gonna do this. Fowler in centre mid, Bruno Fernandes in Cam. Is that gonna work out well? Let's hope so. And honestly that's got me thinking, have we made a mistake with Nkunku? Like don't get me wrong, he's a great player but Bruno Fernandes at Cam has just been so much more effective Effective. And you guys were right. I think we've made a bad call on that. Uh, Bruno Fernandes just worked perfectly with the way we play and everything. And yeah, I'm, I'm still unsure. Now, what do we do ahead? Do we like get a new sentiment? Do we replace Nkunku? Well, you guys can let me know in the comments what y'all think. But for now, we focus on this game. What opportunity it is for the likes of Fowler and all. Here's Ferland Mendy getting past defenders with these. I love the pace he brings to this team. And here's Fowler looking to bring this one inside. Sliding this one for Robert Lewandowski. What a pass it was. Lewandowski couldn't get past the defender. That's what I'm saying. Fowler's just got something about him that maybe Van Der Beek doesn't in this series. And I just want to make use of it. Here we go. The man of this series so far. Jaden Sancho, the sauciest player on this planet. Here he goes with pace. Looking to attack. Ah, finally, Kyle Walker is going to be a menace to deal with. Although we still have it with Sancho. First time shot. 
Pupenti Yas with the block. You know what? Morris could have a competition for being the sauciest player on the planet with, of course, <laughs> Jaden Sancho because the two are unreal as Sancho beats him. Rodri in that instance and looks for the pass inside for Robert Lewandowski. Goes for goal first time, forces a save out of Edison. It's been a tremendous game so far. All right, let's try and get this one into the box. It's a decent ball. Rafa Varane, header. It's off the post. It's off the post. How unlucky are we? That should have been the goal to put us into the lead. No. Fowler looking for that pass for Robert Lewandowski. First time shot. What a save from Edison. Again, are you seeing this performance from Fowler in a Manchester derby? The impact is surreal. Bruno wins that and look at the space for Sancho. This is where he thrives. You give him the time and space. He's going to deliver that ball for you. Lewandowski's header stopped. Another chance for him. No, it's saved by Cancelo again. How aren't we leading in this game? Ah, for the first time, Mahrez has managed to get in behind of, of course, Ferland Mendy. And then we've got Fowler there doing defensive work. This might be the best performance I've seen from Fowler. And now that has turned into an attack for us as Sancho looks to bring it inside. Still Sancho, finesse shot, finds its way for Lewandowski, whose header is stopped. Too many now, looking for Fowler. What are our options? Back for too many. Not many options in here. I'm going to try and just go round the defenders with too many. And he's got the pace, but he couldn't get past Cancelo. Cancelo is too good for him. No, too many has done so well here. Looking for that cross. Finds its way. Robert Lewandowski just wants to score a bicycle kick and repeat what Rooney did all those years ago. It's not happening though. He needs to just maybe just go for the header. Anthony. And I see the space for Robert Lewandowski. Now he looks for Sancho. It's brilliantly done. Sancho going for a chip. I thought that was the right option. Probably was in. You know what? We've got a free kick from 30 yards. And I genuinely don't mind just putting a lot of power on it and just going with it with Bruno Fernandes. And that one dipped ferociously i want to see a replay guys let's take a look at this 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 wasn't half bad this was unreal from bruno a lot of power the dip was ridiculous how close was this oh my god 72 minutes in nothing can separate us and city i think we've been the better team overall but nothing to show for it yet but there's still 20 minutes oh no oh no they've got the chance now they're looking strong and players bombing forward for Man City. Herrera looking inside for Alvarez. Alvarez goes for goal. And Manchester City strike first. That's a big blow. And I feel it's a goal that's very undeserved because we've been the better team for 76 minutes. But in the 77th minute, they open up a bit of space and Julian Alvarez, the next big thing, the next Sergio Aguero for Man City, strikes first. A cold-blooded finish from him. Have a look at that. That was ruthless from Man City. Fair enough, we're 1-0 down. We've got 13 minutes to get something from this. Right, here we go. Anthony's really good from kickoff to create something. Yeah, he goes with pace. This could lead to something. Tries to chip this one in. Didn't work. Should still keep it. Does so. Gets fouled. Referee. How is that not a free kick? I guess we'll never know. Surely that's offside. How is that not offside? Man City with another chance. David De Gea saved us there. And we get the ball away with Fowler helping us out a little bit. Oh, they're going to score this. They're going to score. Raheem Sterling. So unfair. We dominated them for 76 minutes and they end up scoring two goals. That's Pep Guardiola City for you. Absolutely ruthless. We're going to have a great title fight, man. I know this is a setback, but you know what? We've had 10 games so far in the Prem where we haven't lost. At some point, even Man City are going to lose. We took our L now. It hurts, but I genuinely think we've put in a good shift. That's full time. That's a tough blow because I think we've been the better team. And look at Pep Guardiola celebrate, man. What a joke. All right, guys. I think I've made my decision with Nkunku. I want to keep playing Bruno at Cam. I feel like we're wasting his ability playing him at center mid. I know that's against what I said, but I think we still want to keep Nkunku on the bench. Why not? We're Manchester United. We can do that. And I'm thinking we've got a couple of options. Either we trust Van der Beek, who's 83 rated, and put him in that central midfield role, or we bring in an absolutely ridiculous midfielder in the January window. Window, which is something I'm leaning towards. I want to splash the cash in January on an unbelievable midfielder to partner up with too many. Someone who's more box to box can help us out a bit. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you think in the comment section because soon we'll have to make that call. Money's not a concern because we've basically got 230 million, but I genuinely feel like this is not the series where Van der Beek is going to be all that useful. He's only 83 dated. He's 25. That means his potential won't be all that insane. It's the series where we move him on. Plus, I might do an everything 
Hazard and Career Mode in the future. There, I want to make Van de Beek a star, so we'll keep him for that series. For now, I think this is smart. That's how the Premier League table looks after all that. We've got a game against West Ham next. We need to win this. We need to keep pace with the leaders. And they're actually eighth in the Premier League. Putting Nkunku back into the lineup for this one, because I still want to see how he performs. I'm not too keen on selling him. I feel like he could be a great option from the bench. But lineups-wise, this is what I want to go with for this one. We're sticking with our best 11. I need a win here and a convincing win. It's not going to be easy because look at their team. Richarlison, Suchek, Zuma. We've got a good team. Need to bounce back from that L we took against Man City, boys. And we need a good showing here. Players like Nkunku also. What an opportunity to perform after, you know, all the doubts we've been, you know, having with him. Normally, I'd be kind of sad about, you know, a defeat to City like that. But in all honesty, the way we played was a big positive. We, we didn't get dominated by Man City. We, we were the team that were dominating, but it happens in football. In a game of that quality and magnitude, you concede the first goal and things just spiral away from you. So we, we just need to like try and get the first goal in this game as soon as possible. And Kunku, smart release for Sancho. What's he going to do? I think taking it inside is the smart option. Now it's too many. Looking for Anthony. Bruno Fernandes. These nuts. <laughs> okay, how on earth has Juan Bisaka just lost that battle? I have absolutely no idea. 1v Saka. I thought you were good in 1v1s, man. Honestly. That's a good ball in. That's a very good ball in. Pau Torres and then Nkunku do well. And we can maybe get out of the danger zone. Nkunku is quick. So should help. Looks for Anthony. And I see space on the other side. We're going to fire this one for Ferland Mendy. Keeps it in somehow. Looks inside for Sancho. And here we go on the attack now. Sancho looking for Robert Lewandowski. Controls it. Goes for goal. That was outrageous play from Manchester United Robert Lewandowski deserved to score that because that flick up was sensational Robert Lewandowski looks for that pass for Sancho he should get there Denied. first shoots how is that getting saved honestly oh that's a that's a gift no way Zuma how does he have the strength for that and look at the pass as well out wide What's happening in this episode, guys? Looking good. Varane has done brilliantly there, but Chumani needs to be alert, and he was. And we get away from that dangerous situation pretty quickly, but no one on the breakaway, and it's half time. We're struggling to get goals, contrary to what's been happening in this series. Oh, Jan Malenko is looking good there. Looks inside for Sushek, and now it's Richarlison. Thankfully offside, because it was a 2 we one and I was scared we were going to concede. Not going to lie, it's not been Lewandowski's game. I want to make a couple of changes. Hopefully they help. And Kunku's off. Sancho playing at Cam Rashford in the left will also bring off Lewandowski. Controversial. But Darwin Nunes is the kind of player I think we need now. Substitutions have really helped us when things have been tight. But in this case, we have got to prevent conceding first. Richarlison and Pablo Fornals playing with each other there. Oh my God. They should have taking the shot earlier we're so lucky not to concede one last involvement for Lewandowski and co before of course the substitution Sancho goes for goal no space to do anything against this West Ham defense here we go Bruno Fernandes Sancho at cam looks a lot more menacing still Sancho that's so good so nice from Sancho finds Bruno Fernandes here taking it wide Puts it back inside for Rashford. Difficult angle. Marcus Rashford gets his Manchester United moment. And this could be a goal that in the end we look back on and see. Yep, that's where we got the crucial three points that we needed for the title. Unbelievable run of play. Bruno Fernandes was so close to letting that ball go out. And Rashford just decided, you know what? I'm peppering that one in. What a finish from Marcus. Also, can we just appreciate this run from Jadon Sancho in the middle of the park? This little shimmy right here. Oh, so nice indeed. Gets past the defender. And then the pass for Bruno was so smart. And look at Bruno here. Took a heavy touch. Almost let it go out. Look at this, how close it was. Oh my god. Look at how close it was. That you, Some refs might call it even outside, but it wasn't. And then Marcus Rashford did the rest for us. What a moment. Now that I look at that, I probably feel like I should have made changes against Man City as well. Yikes, man. Oh, Rashford. This has been the Rashford show, guys. Look at him go. Still Marcus Rashford trying something there. He's playing with confidence I think he hasn't had in a long time. Could this be a sign that maybe Rashford needs to be starter in some of the games? Okay, you know what? The game's not done yet. We've got to be careful as the cross comes in. Please, one Bisaka. That's good stuff from him. And we get the ball away. Normally, those can headers, we always lose. Marcus Rashford here. Yeah. Back inside for Darwin. Nunes goes for the bike. Now, Sancho again. What a chance. And that probably is full time. No, it isn't. Maybe Darwin 
controls it, but that's it. We've managed to get the three points against West Ham. Oh boy, we had to fight for this. Okay, this is actually perfect. Transferred offer for Van der Beek. 50 million. I think we take it. I really think we just take it. Like, yeah, why not? Why not? We, we need to take this. This is such a good offer. Yeah, I'm, I just don't think I'm going to use him all that much. I'd rather get a different midfielder. I'm doing it, boys. I've just sold Van der Beek. I've done it. It's done. Van der Beek has been sold. Well, not yet. Inter need to go through with the offer and everything. By the way, with that result, we're still just two points off Spurs. By the way, City's still unbeaten in the Premier League. What a record that is. But yeah, the gap is now down to just one point between us and City. Spurs are the team that are top of the league. The focus is now on the Champions League for us now, although we've already secured top spot, not top spot, but we've already secured, of course, a qualification to the round of 16. All we need is a draw against Juventus. We get that. We're basically through to the round of 16 in top spot. Easy. Gonna use this game as an opportunity to play the likes of Darwin Nunes, Rashford, probably Elanga as well. We're gonna rotate the squad massively. When do you get the opportunity to do that, you know? We will play Bruno at Cam, and I wanna play Fowler again. Also, Scotty McDominay. We'll play Lindelof along with Pau Torres. Dalot can play. We'll give Luke Shaw game as well, and Big Dean Henderson a chance. In the Champions League, massive rotations because we're basically through. Let's get this out of the way. Such a great opportunity for the likes of Marcus Rashford to build on that good goal that he scored against West Ham, of course, and I'm hoping for just that. Marcus Rashford going for a finesse shot. You know what? His confidence is sky high, and he's taking those chances. Alanga looking for Dalot, looking for that early ball for Bruno. First time volley. That deserved a goal. Brilliant combination play between Bruno and Dalot there. Oh, Juventus need to win this game. If they end up losing here, they could be on the verge of getting knocked out from this group, guys. So... It's a must-win game for them. For us, we're just having a bit of fun here. To be honest, I'd love knocking out Juventus, so let's give it our all. Good from Lindelof. If we can get out of danger, we can. Elanga is there to help us out. Ah, but Moise Keen, uh, Juventus have come in with the mood for this game. They're looking much better than us. This Fowler needs to start controlling that midfield. That's a good start. Looking for Dalo there. And now we can move the ball forward. Bruno Fernandes looking for Dalo's run. Sees Darwin Nunes inside. It's a good touch from Nunes, but... Wasn't enough to get past Zapata. And we still keep the ball there with Fowler. Now Fowler's got a chance to go for goal. That was one hell of an effort. Good save, Chesney. But now we're growing into the game as well. Oh, that's a good ball for Paolo Dybala. It's a chase for Pau Torres. Nope. And he does incredibly well. This season, Pau Torres has understood how Manchester United play. And we're seeing a much better version from him. Why has Dybala just got so much space that you almost scored off that halftime? Nil-nil. It's been a weird one. Oh, problems again. Moise Keane looking for Bernardo. Goes for goal. What a goal from Juventus that was. Bernardo Silva puts them 1-0 up. I think I want to start making changes now. I want to try and get a draw at least from this game. So what I'm thinking is we'll bring on Jaden Sancho for maybe Elanga. Play Sancho on the right. He can't play there. Also, too many maybe. I think I'm going to do this then. You know what? Let's do this. We'll put Sancho here. Fowler comes off. Lewandowski's on. Play Nunes on the right. Super aggressive strategy. Let's hope it works. Oh, they've got another chance. Rabio makes it 2-0. Not the game we were looking for, folks. Not the game we were looking for. Uh, I know we've got nothing much to play. To be fair, now we do because we need to get a result in our final Champions League game. Otherwise, we've got problems because this is a bad L for us to take. Ah, oh, Bernardo Silva. Man, they're just walking past us right now. It's 3-0. Utter humiliation at the hands of Juventus. What have we done in this episode? Our gameplay has been shocking. Five unanswered goals against Juve and Man City. This game, we haven't even played well. At least against Man City, we put in a good performance. Marcus Rashford somehow just breaks through all on his own. Goes for goal. How aren't we scoring these chances is the real question. Our finishing has been so sus in this episode. I've literally just let Vlahovic go through on goal. He goes for goal from distance. Biggest mistake. He could have just run through there. I just don't know what to do. We just can't compete right now against Juventus. It's just not been it. As we've got a, maybe a breakthrough opportunity here for Marcus Rashford to do something. But the way Juventus are defending, it's unreal. As Robert Lewandowski gets a bit of space, goes for goal. That was one of our best chances of the game. We take the LD Juventus and this has made the Champions League group a bit more complicated for us. 
We got a game against Southampton right now, which we're going to get out of the way. And we need to pick up wins in these games. Uh, a relief. It's a 1-0 win. Rashford's been the man in this episode, you know. And it's happened. Van der Beek has been sold. The deal has gone through. He's going to be joining Inter. And I think that confirms my decision. I want to sign a midfielder in January and put Bruno Fernandes back in cam where I think he belongs. We're going to try and convert him back to a cam. Yeah, that's a bit of an L on my part for not, not letting him stay there because he was performing so well in that position. It's going to take 35 weeks, but if we play him there, I think sooner rather than later, he'll be in that position. But who do we sign for that sentiment position? I'm thinking someone like Fede Valverde could be the man. Why is he not popping up here? Let's see. Valverde. I think he would be just unreal alongside too many there. Oh boy, that'd be a fantastic signing. But what else do you guys think would be an amazing option for us? Let me know. Next up, Aston Villa, who are going to be a tricky opponent as always. Stevie G's Aston Villa, of course. And we end up with a 2-1 win. Sancho and Nkunku scoring. And now we play against the mighty Burnley. What's Burnley going to do against us? And it's a 2-0 win again. These sim games are helping us out big time. All right, so those results have surprisingly put a stop in the Premier League. Even after being terrible in terms of gameplay in this episode, we're top of the league. City and Liverpool and Spurs especially have completely bottled it. It's the history of the Tottenham. City are no longer invincible. This is brilliant for us. So yeah, after even playing really badly in this episode, it's not too bad for us. And we're going to wrap the episode off simulating this game against Mechelin, where if we win or even get a draw, we top the group. I'm expecting a win from this game, guys. No two ways about it. Let's get a win. Let's stop the group. Exactly what we needed. We've topped our Champions League group. Would you look at that? Marseille have managed to get the better of Juventus in the final group game. Unreal. So it's Manchester United and Marseille going through. That's tremendous. Now that we sold Van der Beek, guys, next episode we're going to be in the market for a big mid Fielder. That's where I want to invest and put Bruno back in the cam. Catch you guys for the next episode then. Big changes coming as we will be in the Jan Win transfer window for the next one. If you're enjoying this series, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you all for the next episode of the Man United career mode. Peace.